The point is that property ownership in the post-war period went through the roof. And the current generation, people in their th- tw- late 20s, 30s, even early 40s now, do not approach property ownership in the way that I did. This was one of the biggest discoveries I made presenting this program. Um, because for good or for ill, if you were born in the early 70s, you saw property ownership, if not as your right, your prerogative, then certainly as, as, as a mark of success and achievement. And then, then I speak to younger people now, and it's not, it's not the same conversation. It's not the same principle. It's, it's something that has changed beneath our feet, and it's changed incrementally so we haven't noticed. Like the old adage about a frog being boiled. You know, uh, I don't think it's biologically true, but it's a figure of speech for a reason. And the idea is you don't notice that you're boiling to death because the temperature gets turned up so slowly. So let's call it the presumption of property ownership. And I know that doesn't apply to everybody. And I am not in any sense, way, shape or form looking down on people who never had a presumption of property ownership. Quite the opposite, actually. But that's gone. I speak to people in their 20s and 30s and the presumption of property ownership from people with a background compar- comparable, got picked up on Twitter at the weekend for mispronouncing that word, so I need to keep a list of all the words I mispronounce. Comparable, not comparable. I always say comparable. Apparently it's supposed to be comparable. Backgrounds comparable to mine, by which I don't mean, you know, private school and all that malarkey. I just mean a realistic expectation, a presumption even, of property ownership. And what was property ownership for my generation? Property ownership was a 110% mortgage. 110% mortgage. So you'd go out with borrowed money, quotes, buy, end quotes, a flat, kit it out or go on holiday with what was left over, sit back, watch the property go up and somehow feel like one of life's winners. And then a few years ago, I was at a party and there's a bloke there doing what always happens at middle class Christmas drinks parties. There's sort of areas where you meet people you don't know that well because it's more neighbourhood-based than, than social circle-based, and, and it was banging on about how much all our houses were going up in value at the time. And someone else in the, in the room just said, well, it's still worth one house, mate. And I didn't know what he meant. Your house is still only worth one house. And, of course, the point was that on paper, it's going up in value, and therefore we feel richer and more secure. The capital goes up, but you still have the loan, most of us. But it's still only worth one house. So when you sell it, whatever you buy has undergone similar inflation. You know, even if you up sticks and move out of a very high-priced urban area into into a rural area, you've still seen a form of inflation on whatever it is you're going to buy. And actually, of course, you surrender social capital by moving from conurbations to country. And that, that, I'm, I'm not a genius by any stretch of the imagination, as I'm sure you don't need me to tell you. But some stuff just sticks in my mind and my memory, and I I find myself chewing on it in the the subsequent years. A lot of the stuff that happens on the programme fits into that category. A lot of the stuff you tell me. So the presumption of property ownership is one of those articles of faith that I feel less committed to now than I did as a younger man. Now, a little bit of hypocrisy or cognitive dissonance or selfishness kicks in here because one of the first things I will urge my own children to do is to get onto the property ladder and I will do whatever I can to help them to do so. That's not really of a piece with my claim to have lost a little bit of faith in the presumption of property ownership, except for this simple reason. If you increase demand by making it easier to borrow money without increasing supply, then all you're really doing is doubling down on the artificial inflation, which is in many ways responsible for a lot of the financial problems that our country and our younger generations currently face. So I want you to either welcome or or not welcome plans that are to be announced today, or, or plans that were announced in the budget, but which are now reaching the market, where high street lenders are going to offer mortgages to borrowers if you have a deposit of just 5% under a new government guarantee scheme. I haven't crunched the numbers completely, but I think the interest rates that these people will be expected to pay or required to pay would involve it costing them more money to borrow than it does the owners of Arsenal and Manchester United, just to neatly tie things in with the last conversation. 